Sometimes I joke to students that this page of their notes is a page that they should uh, laminate and carry around with them and refer back to throughout the quarter. Maybe it's not such a bad joke. Maybe you really should do that because this is your nervous system introduction and I kid you not understanding this page will help you get answers right on test after test after test because it's really bringing together a lot of basic information. Okay, so <laughs> what I've drawn here is, this is the brain, here's the cerebellum on the back of it and then the spinal cord going down and we're going to highlight all of that in yellow because this is all uh, central nervous system. And the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. Oh, looks like I forgot to highlight the cerebellum. The back of the brain. Okay. Then down here, scoot your page up. Central nervous system is also referred to as the CNS. And I know this is a little redundant, we just put this, but it consists of the brain and the spinal cord. And it communicates with the peripheral nervous system. or the PNS. And what does it consist of? Well, I'm going to start coloring on here and let's see if you can figure out what we mean when we say the peripheral nervous system. Well, there are some nerves that come off of the brain itself and then there are nerves that come off the spinal cord that go to your arms and then there are nerves that come off of your spinal cord that go around your rib cage and to your internal organs like your heart and lungs and then there are nerves that come off your spinal cord that go to your legs and also some sacral nerves that come off the very bottom of the spinal cord that go to your legs and to your uh, pelvic organs. Okay, so what did, what word did you keep hearing me say over and over again? Hopefully what you picked up on were nerves. And sure enough, that's what we find in the peripheral nervous system are all of the nerves. You have 12 pairs of nerves that come off of your brain. We call those cranial nerves. Twelve of those. And then you have 31 pairs of spinal nerves. All of these make up the peripheral nervous system. So you can highlight peripheral nervous system in pink and the central nervous system in yellow. Okay, so now is where it really gets fun. We're gonna talk about, well, how does information get um, from the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system? It gets there by going up, right? And that the nerves that are gonna be sending information up are sensory another word for that for sensory is afferent the afferent means it's going toward the uh, either toward the spinal cord so it's, yeah so either going toward the spinal cord or 
uh, directly toward the brain. So to give you an example, if you feel something on your finger, then that sensory nerve had to go up through your spinal cord and then up to your brain for processing. If you see something with your eyes, that sensory information was able to go directly from your eye to your brain. It didn't have to go through the spinal cord. So now we'll think about all of the different kinds of sensory information. I just gave you a couple of them, didn't I? Touch. And very closely related, no susception. What the heck is that, right? That's pain, pain receptors. Temperature. You might notice that many of these receptors are going to be located in the skin, but not all of them, right? You can feel a cramp in your intestines, so that would be um, a, from coming from an internal organ rather than the skin. You also have a stretch receptors in most of your organs, whether it's a muscle or an intest the intestines or your bladder or your uterus. And then there are the special senses. And if you look up at the top of your page, I'm going to come right back, so don't worry if you're not caught up with me writing. Look at this. What do you think some of the special senses might be? Sight. Smell. Taste. hearing. But you hear about the five senses, right? That's one, two, three, four, five. Those are your five senses. So if you hear about someone having a sixth sense, then they're suggesting that they can sense things in another realm or within the paranormal. So if someone is able to hear, then that sense is uh, means that they're sending action potentials in response to sound waves. If they can see, then they're sending the, those receptors will send action potentials in response to light waves. And actually, it's movement of the gel, but that's what it starts out as sensing light waves. Smell and taste are responding to chemicals, either in the air or in um, the food on your mouth. Okay, now we're going to use a red pen to look at motor output. So that would be information going out from the central nervous system, and that means it's either going to go um, out a spinal nerve or out a cranial nerve. It's got to go out one or the other. And we call these kind of nerves motor nerves, and another word for motor is efferent. You see the E instead of the A, it means to go away from. Okay, now, not surprisingly, you have control over a lot of things that you can move or motor up. Other things you can't control. The primary thing you can control are neurons that go to your skeletal muscles. We call those voluntary. But I hope you could also understand that just because you can choose to contract your quadricep, there are times when you're exercising, you don't have to think about it at all because you've done it so many times. Okay, so another word for that, I heard a joke once, is that in anatomy, um, there's always uh, at least two names for everything unless there are possibly uh, more. So it's always better to have more names than less names. And of course, we would all agree that that's ridiculous, but that is the way it goes in a, a, a science anatomy that has gone back for thousands of years. It doesn't mean they've always been right about what they found or the physiology, what they thought it did, but people have been studying dead bodies of animals and humans for as long as people have been around. Okay, so somatic will go to skeletal muscles. And you have over 600 of these. So this would be the voluntary. So this is the kind of question you might see on a test. 
I would say, what kind of a neuron could stimulate a skeletal muscle? And then if it's a multiple choice, what you're really trying to get at is it would be a somatic motor neuron, right? It wouldn't be a sensory neuron, and it would not be uh, an autonomic, which we'll look at over here, or involuntary. Involuntary motor output goes to things like your heart. It's kind of automatic, right? So another name for it is autonomic. You can box in skeletal muscles here. And that's going to be going to the other kinds of muscles, smooth muscle and cardiac muscle. I used to always add glands to this list, but really the way that a gland is controlled is by squeezing the smooth muscle around the gland so that the gland empties out its ingredients. So I think we can even simplify and just say smooth muscle or cardiac muscle. Okay, now let's use um, a blue and green, or actually let's not use blue. How about red and green? So red would be neurons that go to organs to help them get ready for fight or flight. So sympathetic or fight or flight. And another name for that is thoracolumbar because the neurons that get you ready for fight or flight, and I'm not joking, this is actually, this is very straightforward. They all come from the thoracic region of the spinal cord. They come off of that. So all in these, cent these nerves here are going to be the ones that your, your organs, whether it's your heart or your lungs or your skeletal muscles, or your eyes even, all of them come from originate off of the uh, thoracic and the little bit of the lumbar region of your spinal cord. Okay, now compare that, we'll use green, with uh, what's called rest and digest, or the parasympathetic, para meaning beside the sympathetic, or the cranio, sacral. The word sympathetic um, it has a very ancient meaning of, like, you know, you think of sympathy, but it actually has to do with emotion and, like, strong reaction. So, of course, you can see where, over time, that name kind of evolved into uh, what our body does when it's under stress. And then parasympathetic means beside that sympathetic, besides the, beside those sympathetic neurons. And you can figure that out if you think about an animal this is funny, I'm going to turn your page, that is on four legs, all of the nerves for the parasympathetic come off of either the brain or the sacral parts of, uh, that it's not even part of the spinal cord, but off of the sacral nerves. So that's why it's called beside. So if this is the sympathetic region where the nerves come off, the craniosacral, the parasympathetic is beside the sympathetic. In humans, it would be above and below rather than beside, right? Because we stand upright. 